it's me, Barbie. Today I'd like to share with you one of my favorite holiday stories, Barbie and the Nutcracker. All right, first let's share the pictures of all the characters you're gonna meet in this story. We have Peppermint Girl, my horse Marzipan, Major Mint, the Snow Fairy, of course the Nutcracker, the Flower Fairy, Gingerbread Boy, the Mouse King, Coral Candy, and me as Clara. One Christmas Eve, a long time ago, a girl named Clara received a special present from her favorite aunt, a fine wooden nutcracker. Thank you, auntie, Clara cried. He's wonderful. But just a short time later, Clara's jealous little brother Tommy yanked the nutcracker's arm, causing it to snap. Clara tiptoed downstairs and carefully bandaged the Nutcracker's arm. She soon drifted to sleep on the soft parlor sofa. As she dreamed, the clock began to strike midnight. Bong! 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 Sparkling mist poured from a tiny knot hole in the clock. Bong! 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 An army of mice swarmed into the room. Bong, bong, bong! The Nutcracker's eyes snapped open. He jumped up and raised his sword. Bong, bong, bong! Midnight! Clara's eyes fluttered open. She gasped at what she saw. There, beneath her Christmas tree, raged a battle between the Nutcracker and the mice. Clara tried to help. But the Mouse King cast a spell, and Clara began to shrink until she was as small as the Nutcracker. Only the Sugar Plum Princess can undo this spell, the Nutcracker told her. I've been searching for the princess ever since the Mouse King turned me into a Nutcracker. Just then, an owl gave Clara a shiny locket. When you find the Sugar Plum Princess, he explained, open the locket and you will return home to your normal size. Together, Clara and the Nutcracker went in search of the Sugar Plum Princess. Through the knot hole in the clock, and then down a sparkling tunnel that led to a magical land. Snowflakes glittered, but it wasn't even cold. Suddenly, they were surrounded by tiny dancing creatures. Snow fairies, the Nutcracker said. Traveling on, Clara and the Nutcracker discovered a magical horse named Marzipan. In, the, in a ruined gingerbread village. Riding in Marzipan's sleigh amid the broken cottages, Clara spotted a tiny doll on the ground. Is this doll yours? Clara asked a girl in, dressed in a peppermint stripes. The peppermint girl nodded. Who did this? The nutcracker asked her brother, the gingerbread boy. The Mouse King's army, they answered. And here they come, yelled the children. Marzipan raced away for safety, leaving Clara and her friends to run from the evil mice. Suddenly, a ladder unfurled from a tree above. Racing up the ladder, they met their rescuers, Major Mint and Colonel Candy. Let us help you find the Sugar Plum Princess, said Major Mint. Meanwhile, inside the Palace of Sweets, the Mouse King sat surrounded by subjects he turned into stone. Frowning, he listened as Pim the Bat told him the news. Clara and the Nutcracker were looking for the Sugar Plum Princess. The Mouse King's eye glittered. I have a plan to stop them, he sneered. Back in the forest, Clara and the Nutcracker searched for food and water for their journey. When the Nutcracker uncovered an old well, dozens of flower fairies escaped. The fairies, who had been trapped by the evil mice, danced to thank the Nutcracker for setting them free. Filled with delight, Clara joined the fairies' fun. Suddenly, the ground began shaking. The Mouse King had sent a rock giant to attack. The air filled with snow. 
No, not snow. The snow fairies. They blew on the nearby lake, turning it to ice. And Marzipan galloped back, too. Hurry to the sleigh, Clara cried. As the Nutcracker cracked the ice with his sword, the rock giant crashed into the dark, icy water. The group traveled on to a thick, dark fog. Soon, through the mist, they spotted an island of silver and gold, and a palace that glistened like pearls. The Sugar Plum Palace, Major Mitt cried, and he led them into the castle. But suddenly, the castle melted away. Clara saw that it was a trick. Her friends were trapped in a huge cage. She watched in horror as great bats unfolded their wings and carried her friends away. Clara came up with a plan. It's up to me to save my friends, she said. She turned to the tiny flower fairies who had gathered around her. Can you take me to the Palace of Sweets? The crocus fairy chirped, and suddenly hundreds of flower fairies appeared. They braided vines into a swing and tucked in a cushion of soft green moss. Hold on tightly, they told Clara. Then they whisked her off into the sky. When Clara reached the castle, she sneaked inside and saved her friends. The Mouse King was angered by their escape. He called to his soldiers and aimed his magic scepter. But the Nutcracker raised his sword, and the blade reflected the evil magic back at the Mouse King. And he began to shrink and shrink and shrink. As Clara gently kissed the Nutcracker, a golden mist swirled around them. And the Nutcracker turned into Prince Eric. Clara's simple nightgown transformed into a satin gown, and a golden crown appeared upon her head. All around them, the stone statues turned back into people and fairies. You are the sugar plum princess, Prince Eric told an astonished Clara, and you have broken the Mouse King's evil enchantments. transformed the palace with magic. Everyone celebrated, then bowed as the prince was crowned king. Will you stay and be my queen? King Eric asked Clara. Clara grasped, grasped the locket around her neck. This was supposed to take me home, but in my heart, I feel I'm already there. The teeny tiny mouse king was not finished with his mischief, however. Pim the bat swooped down and stole Clara's locket and handed it to the mouse king, and as he opened it, Clara began to fade away. When Clara awoke, it was Christmas morning. She was back home in the parlor without her locket, and the Nutcracker had disappeared. She was so sad she didn't even care that she had to wait for her favorite aunt to arrive before they could open presents. Later that evening, her aunt finally arrived, but with a friend. I'd like you to meet Eric, she said with a smile. Clara gasped. It's you, isn't it? She whispered, and Eric smiled and slipped something into the palm of her hand her missing locket. May I have the next dance? He asked. And as they danced, Clara felt as if they were the king and queen of their very own fairy tale castle. The end.